Hey guys, this is Ed Rowe. Today we will be talking about a newer state management library for React called RecoilJS. Here we will talk about what RecoilJS is, how it differs from other state management libraries, and whether you should be using it. First, let's talk about some comparisons and see where Recoil fits in among the other state management libraries. Currently, we can separate each state library into three different categories, Flux, Proxy, and Atomic. Recoil basically fits in the Atomic category where we have these things called atoms, which are changeable and subscribable pieces of state. These pieces of state are stored within the React tree, making it very similar to how you would use the use state and use context hooks, making it very easy to pick up. And thus Redux tends to encourage and combine state into one external centralized store, whereas Recoil will encourage separation of state into separate pieces throughout your different components. To get a better understanding of Recoil, let's take a look at some of the code to build a simple application that increments a count. All right, so here in Create React App, um, we have installed Recoil.js. Then we're going to the index.js file, and we're going to make one import called Recoil root, and we are going to wrap that around the app component and we are going to make some imports. So we are going to create a component called counter. We're going to import that and we are going to write that in the JSX and then we'll also import change counter, which will be another component that we will be creating soon and we will be placing that into JSX. Next, we're going to create a file called counter.js And in this file, we are going to be creating a function counter. Then we're going to export that counter. And then we're going to be importing atom and use recoil state from the recoil library. And then we're going to create a count state using atom from recoil and giving it a key of count state and a default value of zero. So these atoms are these pieces of state that you can use throughout your application. And then we are going to be using our use recoil state with count and set count while grabbing our count state that we have created. So basically, if you take a look, this is very similar to how you would use use state. Instead, you're using use recoil state with the count state that you've created. So this is a piece of state that you can be using and that you can use throughout your application. And then finally, we are going to be returning the count and displaying the count that we've created. And then we're going to be creating our change counter file. We are first going to create a change counter component and making sure we export that. Then we are going to import use recoil state from the recoil library and we are going to import count state from the counter file we have just created. So basically this atom right here, we're going to be using that here. And as we've done before, we're going to use recoil state to grab the value count and set count. And this time we are going to create a button that will increment our count. And anytime someone clicks this button, it's going to update the count. So, in this case, what this is showing is that we can basically use count state in any of the in any of the components throughout the application. So even though the atom basically lives here in this particular component, we are still able to be using it in over here in the change counter file, even though these two, these counter file and the change counter file, they're both the child of the app JS file. So regardless, you can use both. You can use the count in any of the child components anytime you want to just import. And then finally, we can do something like we can use the selector, we can use recoil value. So these two things 
allow you to build something like this, which is a selector. Basically, you can use any of the keys or atoms or states that you've created and select the value that you want, as well as manipulate it and change the values as you need. For example, in this case, we've created count times two. So if we wanted to grab the state, but we also mul multiply by two, we can use this value by creating this particular selector. So when we do that, we're going to have to use, use recoil value. We're going to pass this selector state that we've created. And then we can create another div that will d basically display this value over here. And now if we run our app, if everything goes well, we will see count. We'll see count times two and we'll see a button. So if we increase the count value, we're going to see a count that will be incremented every time you click it. And then a count times two, which will always multiply this state by two and we'll get six in this case. Now let's talk about reliability for Recoil JS. The first thing to mention is that it is currently sitting at almost 14,000 stars on their GitHub, which is impressive for a less than two year project. And right now it currently has name association with Facebook giving a bit of a legitimacy to this project. And because of this popularity comes a larger community and more reliability in ensuring the project does not die. However, in contrast, it is important to note that Recoil.js, like has been mentioned, it's only been out since May 4th, 2020, meaning as of 2021, it's only been out for a little over a year and still considered in an experimental phase. Also, the almighty Dan Abramoff states that while Recoil has association with Facebook, Recoil, just like Redux, is not considered an official state management library for React. So should you use Recoil.js? As with most newer JavaScript libraries, I would always approach it with caution. If you're working with smaller applications, you want leaner code and you're allowed to experiment, or you might have a similar use case that Facebook needed, which is having many changing state that needs to be re-rendered separately, Recoil.js can certainly be a great option. If you are working to create a larger enterprise application or apps that require heavyweight solutions, you definitely wouldn't want to use Recoil.js, as was mentioned before, that it's still in experimental phase. With Recoil.js attaining rapid popularity along with the generally excited reception from the community because of its lean amount of code and that it's ease of use, most of the time, you'll probably be fine using it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit about Recoil.js. Make sure to like and subscribe. Comment below whether you liked the video or not. And I'll see you in the next one.